In tonight's Dateline Healthline, if you've ever suffered from chronic pain, whether from an illness or accident, you know how it can color everything you do. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But recent advances in an old form of therapy have shown great promise in reducing severe chronic pain and the struggle its sufferers endure just to get through the day. Here's Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Bob Arnott with details of how it works. Pain has total control. All you want to do is scream. Can this man's pain be cured by this tiny electrical device? Can it do for him what surgeon's hands couldn't do? What powerful narcotics couldn't control? And what physical therapy couldn't heal? Andrew Glover is desperate to know the answer. Because for him, walking is not intended exercise. It is an act of despair. But no matter how long he paces, he cannot escape the constant excruciating pain that starts in his lower back and shoots down his left leg. I have had pain every moment of every day since 95. Once a healthy, active man who loved the outdoors, his severe chronic pain began in January of 1995 when he slipped in the rain and herniated a disc in his back. Since then, he's had three failed surgeries, physical therapy, and about 35 different drugs. Narcotics help ease the pain, but they also cause a new problem. All it does is dull my mind and my senses down to where I can deal with the pain. But it's not conducive to train of thought or, or, or living a good life. If you got uh, Manhattan Beach done sooner, then you wouldn't have... It also to adds pressure at work as a salesman for a Los Angeles area sign company. Due to his pain, Andrew cannot sit for long. He is forced to stand for hours at a time. Hey, girls. You have music today, huh? But the place where Andrew feels his pain most is at home, where it is more than just physical. I think I'm a husband and a father in name only. I haven't been a real participant in two and a half years. My wife's had to do everything. She's been the father and the mother. It's incredibly frustrating to me, and it's incredibly depressing because I've seen his condition deteriorate. You know, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. <clears throat> Andrew cannot bend down to hug his three daughters or scoop them up in his arms. Even sitting down to play with them is a painful ordeal. They've been cheated, basically, out of two and a half years of life. It's not fair to them, it's not fair to me. Constant chronic pain has sapped the life and energy from this 39-year-old father. I am an angry, tired, grumpy old man. If it wasn't for the fact that I have three kids and a wife that still believes that there's going to be a miracle down the corner, I don't know if I would have had the strength to stick it out. But Kelly Glover refused to give up. She searched for two years until she heard about a doctor who might be able to help. Dr. Joshua Prager is the director of the California Pain Medicine Center in Los Angeles. He examined Andrew and thought there was one thing left for him to try. I thought a technique called spinal cord stimulation would help him control his pain. A spinal cord stimulator is a small implantable device that weighs about an ounce and a half and can fit in the palm of your hand. The stimulator emits minute amounts of electricity which are transmitted in the body through electrodes. Normally pain signals are relayed up the spinal cord to the brain. The stimulator works by blocking the pain signal where it is sent so the brain never gets the message to transmit pain. Dr. Prager hopes this technology will reduce Andrew's pain by 50%, but there are no guarantees. In any type of medical procedure, we're always talking about probabilities. And I think the probabilities are on our side, but it's still probabilities. If I get the reduction in pain, then I make, then I intend everything I can to make up for lost time. When Andrew and his wife, Kelly, arrive at the hospital... Hi, I've got Mr. Glover. ...they are ready for their day of reckoning. Unlike his previous back surgeries that had been under general anesthesia, lasted hours and taken weeks of rehabilitation and still didn't work, this procedure is relatively simple. I'm ready to get going on this and get it done. I've been looking forward to doing this. 
Pain medicine specialists are increasingly using stimulators to fight chronic pain. Almost 25,000 have been implanted in the U.S. during the last five years. After careful screening, the success rate averages 70 percent. The operation will take about two hours, but Andrew won't get to sleep through it all. Yes, you with me? I'm with you. After the incision, Dr. Prager uses a live x-ray to place a thin cable with electrodes in the spinal cord at the exact spot where the pain signal is transmitted. He needs Andrew's help to find the precise place where the pain signals can be blocked, the so-called sweet spot. We're talking about a spot that's only uh, one or two millimeters big. Andrew is not sedated. He can still feel pain. That means he can also feel the stimulator's tiny electrical impulses. All right, we're going to turn it on. Tell me when you start to feel it. Dr. Prager moves the electrodes as the technician adjusts the stimulator's output of electricity. It's a high-tech hunt for the right combination to control Andrew's pain. Where are you feeling it? Down the left side. About how much of your pain area are we covering now? 50 to 70. Okay. Covering about 60 to 70 percent of his pain. That's all. As the search continues, Andrew must also stay focused, even though he can still feel the pain of his past injury and the discomfort of the procedure. Andrew, we're real close now. After 35 minutes, the team has isolated the sweet spot, and at long last, Andrew Glover is feeling no pain. That's really nice right there. You like it right there? Yeah. Andrew can finally rest. After he is sedated, he drifts off with the stimulator managing most of his pain. It's barely noticeable. It's like a damn miracle. Dr. Prager implants the device in the components that will power it. In recovery, Andrew wakes up, relatively pain-free for the first time in three years. Using a portable computer, the medical team programs the stimulator's electrical output. The computer communicates by radio frequency with a mechanism in Andrew's body. It took a long time to find you, but thank you. God, I feel so much better. But the real challenge will come when Andrew goes home and tests the limits of the technology inside him. Good boy. Two months later, Andrew Glover is still adjusting to his new life. One, he says, is much less painful. I would say about 80% of the pain is gone. He calls the stimulator a miracle that saved his life. The device works 24 hours a day. Andrew adjusts it with a remote control that is always with him. He simply puts it over the implanted device to increase or decrease the electrical impulses constantly flowing through his body. I thought it was going to be real difficult or scientific, and it's, it's like uh, working a remote control for your garage door. Andrew no longer takes any pain pills. The relief he gets from the stimulator means he can do the normal things pain used to prevent. Instead of standing up to work, he can now sit down. He can bend to pet his dog. <laughs> the best change of all is that once again, Andrew Glover is the husband and father he wants to be. I got my wish. I got what I wanted out of it and more. There was no living before and now i am living again dr prager says andrew's stimulator will give him constant relief for about four years then it will be time for a new battery but the stimulator is not for everyone only patients who have been carefully screened and for whom nothing else has worked